global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello fam. Welcome back to our channel. If this is the first time of seeing this channel, kindly hit on the red subscribe button below. Beside it, you also see a bell notification icon. Go ahead. Click on it to get notified. Alright, a fortnight ago, there was a... a, a an audio made by Mazin Abdekano over Nyawodo and that it was issued. There was this uh, threat he gave to anyone, anywhere you see uh, Nyawodo, they should kindly uh, stone him and all that. For those of us who missed the audio, we we'll should definitely show you, share with you in this channel so that you see for yourself or you rather you hear for yourself when it was made. For those who are doubting it and for those who did not hear it, we actually give you the opportunity to hear. But that's not where, where we are heading. What we are heading is the fact that um, uh, the organizer group have actually given them the candidate, the leader of IPOB, seven days to retract, to withdraw the death sentence up on on a near water the face off is already brewing between the youth wing of Ohanes and Debo and the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB. Namde Kano as the former has issued a seven day ultimatum to Kano to withdraw his alleged threat death threat on President General of Ohanes and Debo Chief Niamodo. The said Kano should be ready to face dire consequences if he failed to apologize to Umwodo. Ohana is the youth and the entire Igbo nation for his unguarded untrusted all trances. The IPOB leader had a fortnight ago in one of his outings in this on the social media directed you Igbo youth to stone Ohana as a leader to that anywhere they saw him. Uh, I think for for us to further understand where we are heading, I'm gonna allow you to listen to when he said it, then we'll continue with the news so that you will have an understanding that it's not heresy. Just hear him out. Hear him talk, then we'll come back. That's spelling me tonight. And why Nyamwodo should be stoned? Anywhere you see him outside, stone him to death. Is the plight of this woman. And I hope we're going to get her in an Do you know what happened to her? The report. Welcome back. The report which went viral over this issue, the report which went viral has dominated public discourse across towns and communities in Igbo land and beyond. That's this uh, this whole issue of don't stone, stone uh, and all that has gone very viral on public discourse across towns and communities in Igbo land. Igbo, the Igbos are wondering, should we, should we not? Is it okay? Is it right? Uh, is it within our space to do it and all that? But let's continue. It's inked by the inked by the development of Hanese youth staged a solidarity march for Umwodo on some streets of Enugu metropolis on Tuesday evening. The march terminated at Ohane's National Secretariat, where they were received by the president of Ohane's Enugu State Chapter, Chief Alex Obonaya, leader of Ohane's Ndibo Enugu State, Vincent Leos Obonaya, who spoke on behalf of others, said they embarked on the march to demonstrate that IPOB leader was on his, on his own and to tell the world that Igbo youth were firmly in support of the various steps their parent body of Igbo Social Cultural Association globally has taken so far in ensuring the unity of Igbo people world over. Okay? He said, he said such steps, they said, had helped in cementing peaceful relationship between the Igbos and their neighbors, host communities, and other ethnic groups, most especially in Nigeria. They described the utterances of Kano against Umwodo as very unbecoming, and his recent outburst urging Igbo's youth to stone him Umwodo, to death as the highest point of insult on the Igbo leader. The youth said, "The youth and the entire Igbo race." They said, "I read. We read Mazen and the Kano's death threat in which he urged Igbo youth to stone Chief Niamwodo. The Ohane is the President General wherever they see him on the social media." We followed it up and found out that it has been an issue of public discussion across Igbo land. Yet today, the Igbo youth are saying no to Namde Kano's proclamation. We have respect for our elders. We have respect for Chief Nyanwodo. He has achieved much for the Igbo nation in his capacity as the current President General of Ohaneze Ndibo Worldwide, they stated. 
They also applauded the leadership of Ohane Zindibo for adopting and conversing for restructuring as a panacea to the nation's social, political, and economic problems. According to them, restructuring was similar to the self determination. But that's, that's the pursuit of an independent state of Biafra. As in, if it, it's the same thing, basically, self determination and restructuring is one and the same. That's what um, Ohane's Ndibo group are saying. So the youth commended Umodo's approach in tackling the various social and political challenges confronting the Igbos, stating, the, the, stating that they no, cannot. Cannot can no longer be at ease with Kano's style of intimidating and threatening able leaders to gain cheap popularity. They still continued. I'm still reading what they said. It said addressing the group when he eventually drove into Ohane's secretariat, Umodo disclosed that there were other threats and propaganda aimed at maligning him, but that as a father of the Igbo nation, he simply had refused to join issues with his sons. He, state, he said he still sticks to his inaugural statement to defend the cause of all Igbo pressure groups with genuine cause when it matters and thank Ohane is a youth for their powerful solidarity match. All right, that's the news. That's what they said. And they're telling Mazen and the Kano to, in seven days' time, retract uh, that threat over um, Ohane Zendibo, that's the leader of Ohane Zendibo, uh, Maz, Namdi, uh, sorry, uh, Neawodo, John Neawodo. Okay, but that's that's basically it. Now, if you look at it, IPOB, indigenous people of Biafra, they are evils. Okay, they are evils. Some, like some days back, Benue people show solidarity that they are also part of Biafra. Uh, some other tribes that are not um, non Igbo speaking have also shown that they are also solidarity with Biafra as well. So, uh, basically, the IPOBs are Igbos predominantly, and some others who are not uh, who are not speaking Igbo. And but Ohanes and Igbo is predominantly Igbo. They are basically Igbos, everything Igbo, South Easterners in as a group, and that social cultural group has existed even in the times of Ojuku which means is maybe they've been passing down leadership from one generation to the other, but it has existed, and they know them as a social... The fact they know them as the apex sociocultural group in Igbo land. So maybe the leadership style of Umodo is what is making it look this way or not, but this is been known all over as the apex group of um, Igbo land. That said... I feel that this now this is my opinion. I feel that this issue should have been off the media space. I also feel that um, this is personally my issue. Uh, saying that, um, let's look at it very logically. Let's leave sentiment, okay? Saying that um, um, a leader should be stoned to that. One would say, after all, they, they have been corrupt leaders. They should stone them to that. But two wrongs really do not make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. If we want to get things on track, we should get it. We should do it properly. Let's follow due process. Okay. Let's not um, give the world impressions that you're, you're a violent group or you're known for violence or you're known for uh, troublemaking. Uh, that tag may not all go well. Okay. Yes, people will still join. People will still believe in your cause. But there's a tag of saying that, oh, these people they like to you know but i i feel that yes ohane is in the world at so why mazanam the kakano is calling out niawode because he feels niawode had failed the Igbos. he felt he felt that mazana uh, uh, niawode has failed the Igbos. he has failed for uh you know, from defending them you know while we're still saying that we want there will be peace uh cohibition peaceful cohibition uh, with strangers or or um for other tribes coming into the southeastern states, there will be peaceful co cohibition, but also should also protect the, the indigents. Okay, where a situation a situation where the lives of your indigents are threatened, then the situations should be examined, re-examined. The the sitting, the, the environment, the arrangement should be re-examined such that the people of the land will be protected. Okay. Several we keep hearing chores and chores of Fulani headsmen, you know, doing a lot of mayhem in the southeastern path. If they are a social group, they are a social cultural group. Uh, I feel also 
that um, the, the the people who are who are marginalized as the people who have been harmed since Niamodo is insisting that they speak for the whole of the Ndibos, then bring, take your proofs, take your your, 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 your pictures, your videos, show them to Hanis Ndibo, uh, the leadership, and let them tell them what is the solution. Let one know the solution. Tell us how we're going to go about the solution. Don't just keep talking. You're talking, things are happening. You're talking, our children are, are being maimed every day. So what is the practical solution that will bring us out of this situation that we found ourselves in in our own land you know but i guess this has happened over and over and over again and that's why mazinam is reacting the way it's reacting but i also feel that making a public declaration on that oh, it's a bit indicting if you ask me it, 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 if anything for any reason happens to Niawood and it's not actually Mazinam Dekano that did it, people will assume that it is that call he made that you know, took place. You know, but it, it, it will not fit fine for a people who are asking for a nation and they are already demanding that their, their sons, illustrious sons or their illustrious fathers or illustrious elders should be stoned. But this this is personally my opinion you may differ okay but i feel that things of the house should be done and taken care of in the house only amodo is an evil man mazinam dekanu is an evil man i indigenous people of biafra predominantly evil honest indeed evil predominantly evil go to a town hall meeting however way you usually have your meetings meet and discuss this amicably this is a younger generation, fresher blood as Mazinam the Kano, coming from a younger generation. Niamod is from an older generation. Probably he has diplomacy as one of his keys, the strongest point. Merge it together and find out the last thing. There should be some sort of compromise from both parties so that you don't lock horns. Already you're already locking horns and it's on the social media. Now, I don't know how it's going to play out, but we'll keep you informed how this will play out. But that's where we're going to wrap it up. What's your take on this? As uh, uh, the Ohana is a group have given seven days uh, ultimatum, it has started counting. Uh, that's what we're going to wrap up. Let's move to the comment section. Let's interact. What's your take on this? Do you think Mazinam the Khan is right for calling for 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 the stoning of that of um, Niamodo? Or do you think and uh, Niamodo or, or be based on because when you are saying calling for that, you should, should also understand why he called for it based on the fact that the people of Ndibos are not protected anymore in their land by the Fulanis. Or is Niamodo? Uh, guilty of being stoned to death or being asked to be stoned to death simply because he's diplomatic in his approach and maybe doesn't deserve you know anything in his defense. Let's meet in our comment section, let's interact. But for me, I feel that was actually a tall order. This can actually be discussed within the house without you know threats to life.